Okay, who wants to see a spiritual teaching in the form of drawing about earthly Jerusalem versus Jerusalem above? Okay, uh, let me show you guys something. You guys tell me what you think, okay? Now, we're talking about two cities here, earthly Jerusalem and Jerusalem above. Two cities, one is earthly, one is spiritual, one is heavenly, okay? Now, Isaiah 9, 6 says that Jesus, right here, he's the king of kings and lord of lords. That's why I put a crown on him, okay? <laughs> Jesus, in Isaiah 9, 6, shall be called the everlasting father. Remember that, okay? Paul the apostle in Galatians 4, verses 24 through 27, says Jerusalem above is mother, mother of us all. You see that? Put on your spiritual eyes. So we have our everlasting father and we have our mother, Jerusalem above. But there's another woman. The Bible's always talking about her. She's a filthy whore. And she's earthly Jerusalem right now over there in the Middle East. That's earthly Jerusalem. Oh, she had a husband. She was married to the Lord. He lavished her with purple and scarlet and, and gold and bracelets and the finest flour and spices. And, and, he, and he did everything for her. But she became a whore. And she committed all these whoredoms against him. She forgot him. And she was in bed with Babylon, the Old Testament says. In bed with Babylon. Oh, but she wasn't only in bed with Babylon. She was in bed with everybody. Anybody that would pass by. Anybody that gave this filthy whore a gift, she'd go to bed with him. So in Jeremiah 3, verse 8, he divorced her. He wrote this backsliding Israel a bill of divorce. Okay, but because he's God of his word and he says, I am not a man that I should lie. He kept his promise to Abraham. So he kept lying open through faith, but he divorced backsliding Israel. Okay. Now, um, this whore right here, the Bible tells us she had in the Old Testament blood all on her skirts from killing innocent people. Well, what innocent people did she kill? All the prophets that he sent to her. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. See, the whore of Revelation, she has the blood of prophets in her. And Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, he's very clear. In Luke 13, 33, for it cannot be that a prophet dies outside of Jerusalem. It cannot be. A prophet must die in this earthly Jerusalem, in this whore who's got bloody skirts. The Lord is also very clear when he does say, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. And he tells her, because you killed the prophets and because you stoned all of them that I sent to you, you, little tiny Jerusalem, you're going to be responsible for all the righteous blood shed from Abel to Zechariah. In other words, from A to Z. That's funny. The book of Revelation says the whore of Babylon has all the blood of prophets and all that were slain upon the earth. That's her. That's her. You know, the Old Testament, Jerusalem, this filthy whore right here, she has a cup. Well, doesn't the whore of Revelation also have a cup filled with abominations? Yeah. She does. Um, what else? Oh, in the Old Testament, 
when he was married to her, he clothed her in purple and scarlet, and she was so beautiful. And he told her, wear a blue ribbon so that you won't forget me, so that you'll remember me. Your Lord, your God, your, your husband, your love. Well, she forgot him. You know how we know that she forgot him? Because in the New Testament, the whore of Revelation is only wearing scarlet and purple. She doesn't have on that blue ribbon. In fact, well, she doesn't have on the blue ribbon because the blue ribbon would have her remember him. So she took off that blue ribbon. In fact, she says, I sit as a queen and I am no widow and I have no children. Well, that's true. See, she doesn't have children with him, but he, the everlasting father, has children with her, Jerusalem above, who is our mother, the mother of us all. So if he's our father and she's our mother, they have children together. You see, this is gonna be like the church. Anyone who is saved by grace through faith alone in Christ alone, plus nothing. Saved by the blood of Jesus. The one sacrifice of Jesus. That's it. We are their children. She has no children with him. And she admits it. She don't care. She can care less. So, um... Did I already tell you that the book of Jeremiah says that she has a whore's forehead? That's funny in the book of Revelation. Isn't there something written on the forehead of the whore of Babylon? And did I mention that she's called, spiritually called, Sodom and Egypt by the Lord Jesus himself in the book of Revelation? Yes, my friends, this earthly city is the whore of Revelation. Now, you can say whatever you want. You can say, oh, no, it's Rome. Oh, no, it's, it's Saudi Arabia. But show me one verse in the Bible where Saudi Arabia or Rome has the blood of prophets that were sent to them. Show me where Jesus says that prophets can be killed outside of Jerusalem. It doesn't exist. You guys are deceiving yourselves. I'm sorry. I mean, come on. I used to believe that the whore was Rome. She is a whore. She's a harlot. Rome is a harlot. But there's a mother of harlots. That's her. She's the mother of harlots. You guys cannot show me one verse that says prophets can die outside of Jerusalem. So I hope you can see that. Here is the whore and here is the father and the mother, the mother of us all, who is called mother, the lamb's wife and the bride. Because in the book of Revelation, it says, come, I will show you the lamb's wife, the bride. And then the whole chapter is describing Jerusalem above. Okay. So I hope you can see the spiritual aspect of this, that the Lord has the whore. There's a whore, but then he has a bride. He has a filthy, dirty whore. And then he has a pure, clean bride. Jesus says, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. Why? Because he knows the future. He could see all these Christians all up in this whore, worshiping her and praising her and, 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 and waving her flag with that star that's not even the star of David. Tell me in the Bible one verse where, where David displays this star. It doesn't exist because there isn't any. Paul the Apostle in the book of Acts tells us very clearly that the Jews, the unsaved Jews, 
that they worship the star of their god Moloch and Remphan or something. That was the star that they worship, and that's the star that they have on their flag today. It's not the star of David. These people need Jesus. They are worshiping the devil. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting all passionate about it because I love you. I love you guys. Okay? And, um, you know, I could be out at the beach today and doing all kinds of fun stuff and everything, but you know what? I want to be here and I want to show you God's word of truth in the Bible. I want you guys to be blessed and search the scriptures yourself. Don't, don't take my word for it. Go to the Lord and ask him for truth and he will give you truth. Ask him to open your eyes to show you his truth and he will. Through his word, he will do it. Okay? All right. God bless you guys and have a beautiful night.